um, I have to be effective when I leave here so that I am accomplishing God's will in my life, in my life. Because the organ ain't going to follow me home. <laughs> I know I'm in trouble. And the drums is not going to follow me home. I'm just being truthful. And so now i got to take the anointing of God and allow it to flow through my life so I'm successful in business. Whew. So that I'm successful in school. So I'm successful in the, in the working world so that the Holy Spirit can now work through me to make me successful in every area of my life. That's power. Somebody says, we got power, but the world don't know you got it. It's wonderful to be powerful, and, I, and I've seen both sides. I've seen when you go to a, 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 what you would consider a word church, and they just all preach the word, preach the word, but there's no power. Everybody's educated and got good degrees, but no power to do nothing. Then I've been in the places where they got all power, but they don't know nothing. <laughs> People don't know how to buy property. People don't know how to start businesses. People don't know how to write books. And, but to be successful, you've got to have them both. You've got to have the word with power. You've got to have understanding with power. That's what makes you powerful, is knowing how to use this power and this anointing that God has given me to be successful. Look at your neighbor and say, God wants you to be successful. All right, let me move. Let me move. We're talking about this, don't miss your moment. Could you tell your neighbor, don't miss your moment? My preacher will catch up to you in a minute. i got to talk to you. A moment is this, a short period of time. It is a window. Tell your neighbor a window. That word window means a time frame. The word moment is seasons because seasons change. The woman of God just said that a little while ago. Moment means your now. Tell your neighbor that's your now. So when God is saying don't miss your moment, God is saying that when my spirit begins to move, when the door begins to open, when the opportunity begins to come, when the season comes around, you have to move at that moment or you'll miss it. To miss God is to wait sometimes 40 years, who am I preaching to, that know what I'm talking about because I've had moments in my life that I knew I missed a God moment. I missed conversations with millionaires. I missed moments that I should have bought property. There are moments that I know that I missed that I'm praying now, 20 years later, Lord, I missed it. I sure wish you bring it around again. And I'm still waiting for that moment. Look at your neighbor and say, don't miss your moment. And most of the time, people miss moments because of fear. I'm afraid of what somebody else is going to think about me. I'm, see, I know I'm going to be in trouble. I'm, I'm in trouble already. <laughs> Look, Luke chapter 19, verse 44 says this. Recognize your time of visitation. When you look at that scripture, what Jesus was saying was, they didn't even realize this was their hour of visitation. Look at your neighbor and say, hour is 60 minutes. Some of you got about 60 minutes to step into what God wants you to do. God gives you a window. And a lot of times he says, the reason you missed it is because you didn't even know it was open because you thought it came with a shout. And you thought it was coming with some chills or some bumps. And a lot of times it don't come with nothing but opportunity. But you got to know enough of God's word to know when to step into a moment because it's yours. Oh, Lord Jesus. God is saying, recognize your time because your time ain't mine. Recognize your time because your season ain't my season. And I can't waste my time explaining to you about my season because you don't get it anyway. Because God is not always going to reveal to you what he is speaking to me in my life. And I can't depend on a bunch of nervous disciples to determine whether I should get off this boat and walk on water. Okay. I know I'm in trouble. I know I'm in trouble. So he says, recognize your time. You got to recognize your moment. You got to recognize your season. And you have to maximize that second. Tell your neighbor, you got to maximize it. Because God will speak to you in places you never expected to be spoken to. But tell your neighbor, that's your moment. In Acts chapter 3, it says, When the times of refreshing shall come, from the presence of the Lord. That means it don't always come. See, I'm not, see, can we be honest here? Because sometimes you run on empty. Y'all don't want to help me in here. And sometimes you shout on empty. And sometimes you preach on empty because sometimes you come into church knowing you ain't got no more to give. But what was God saying? That you got to hang on to your faith. When it's not working, you got to hang on to your faith when you don't see it. You got to hang on to your faith when you don't have the 
some money because what God called me to do is not based on whether you help me or not. It's not based on whether I have enough money or not. Okay. What God called me to do is based on his word. And tell your neighbor, sometimes you got to be tried before things come forth. How you doing in a trial? Because sometimes you have to be tried. See, for people, to, for people to think, I'm going to go through this whole thing and not struggle. You got another thing coming. Because there's been demons battling your family for generations. And if you're going to break through, you're going to be the first one. And hell can't afford for you to get that type of victory. So it's going to hit you with everything it got because it don't want you to birth nothing. But if what you've got is of God, hell is coming for it. You never see the devil in the Bible until the real thing shows up. He's invisible until Moses steps in on the scene. And then all of a sudden we realize that Pharaoh's people got some demonic power because when Moses throws down his rod, Pharaoh's magicians throw down theirs. And the Bible says they got the power to match everything that Moses does until you get to about the third chapter when the Bible says lights begin to fall on only the things that belong to the Egyptians. So what that meant was this. If you had cattle one next to the other, the lights only hit cattle that belonged to the Egyptians. And when the Egyptians saw this, they looked at Pharaoh and said, we can't do that. He said, why? They said, because this is the hand of God. And what was God trying to tell us? There's a season where hell can match your power. Hell can match your anointing. Hell can match your building program. But if you can hang on a little while longer, there's going to step into a season where hell don't have no more power. Look at your neighbor and say, don't miss your moment. No, high five your neighbor and say, don't miss your moment. You missed it crying. You missed it. Don't miss your moment. This ain't about education. It's about the Holy Ghost. Can't never don't miss your moment. It's not about how much money you got. It's about your yes to God. God is saying, I'm not looking for a Greek and Hebrew degree. I'm looking for a yes. I'm looking for somebody that dares to believe that I'm able when you ain't got a dime in your pocket. You don't even got the education to do it. Don't the people in your church don't even believe you're able, but there's still a yes in your spirit. God told me that I was coming here today to ignite a moment in somebody. God is saying there's something dormant in your spirit. Tell your neighbor it's dormant. I'm going to prophesy to somebody because you've been waiting on God to birth ministry. You've been waiting on God to birth dreams. You talk about shift. Shift. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I know why God sent me. Because if you know me, I can go to 10,000, I can go three if God give me something to say. And the Lord said to tell them that what is in them is not dead, it's dormant. Do you know the word dormant? It's like in a state of suspended animation. Do you know what wake it up? Just tell your neighbor all it needs is one drop of water. Could you high five three people and say water is about to hit your spirit? And it's about to wake up every dream that's dormant in your life. Tell your neighbor, get ready to push because you're about to birth something. Y'all don't hear me in the building. I said, tell your neighbor, get ready to push because you're about to birth something. You have stuff held up in your spirit, but God is saying your water's about to break and you're about to give birth to stuff that's been dormant in your life for generations and every devil in hell has got to get up out of your way because God is about to release something supernatural in your life. It's all right. He says, when? When? His understanding, he said, it's a time of refreshing. Tell your neighbor refreshing. refreshing. You know what a refreshing is? Tell your neighbor it's your second drink of water. Tell your neighbor it's your second breath. Tell your neighbor it's your second wind. Mm-hmm. 
Turn around and tell your neighbor, God is sending you a second chance. God is saying you let people and you let organizations and you let family members and you let spouses and you let your kids and your job and your bank book and your financial status and what other people thought about you and your education and your degree and what you thought you could or couldn't do hinder you from doing what I told you to do a long time ago but because what is in you is of me I'm about to send you a second wind I'm about to send you a refreshing I'm about to send you another cup of water you're not gonna die here you're gonna get up you're gonna live look at your neighbor and say your refreshing is coming what is refreshing can I give you the definition tell your neighbor it's the strength to accomplish purpose Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't going to pass out this time until it's done. Luke chapter 18, verses 35 through 39, if you just give me a moment. Jesus begins to now, and I don't have time to get into it because there's other things that I want to dig into, but it, it reads that this, it says, and it came to pass as he was nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. I don't got time to get into that. Because if we, if we got into that, we would be here a long time because now we got to deal with the fact that blind Bartimaeus is not his name. His name is Bar Bartimaeus. He gets the name blind because people like to attach stuff to you because they don't believe in you. And so you got to be very careful when people label you. Because what you don't understand is I may be blind today and you gave me the name blind. Daddy gave me Bartimaeus. So I don't have to accept what you attach to me as my name. Because you don't have the right to name me. Okay, good Jesus. And people like to call you broke. And people like to call you twisted. And people like to call you all of these things. But I don't got to be none of them things you name me. Because tell your neighbor, his name going to change in a little while. Okay, oh Jesus. I ain't got time to get into that. And then if I had to go a little bit further, I would tell you how he could never go into the temple because he had a defect and that he could never do what other people did because he was born blind so that when other kids were getting uh, things to play with and being trained how to go fishing, he was given a coat. And the coat that he was given was a, a signification that when people looked at him from afar off, they knew what he was. So his parents were already, pre already preparing him for a life of begging, for a life of failure. I ain't got time to go there. It says, and hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. Tell your neighbors, good to ask questions. Okay. And he cried, and watch, watch this. And then they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passes by. Tell your neighbor a moment. Tell your neighbor moments. And he cried. When? The minute he heard. Saying, Jesus, our son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him. Tell your neighbor, folks will always rebuke you when you're in God's will. If you don't challenge what I'm doing for God, I'm probably not doing it right. But whenever you step out on faith to do something that nobody's ever done, oh, the world going to rebuke you. And not just the world, folks that follow Jesus. Because folks that follow Jesus got more comments than anybody else. But I'm going to leave that alone. That he should hold his peace. Uh-huh. Watch this. But he cried so much more. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor... Every once in a while, you need to shout to drown out the voice of your enemies. I don't think you heard me in the building. I said you got about 30 seconds to open your mouth and shout and drown out every lie, every false prophecy. The devil ever spoke in your life. Shout and drown out the voice of your enemies. Sit down, give me a minute. But he cried so much more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Not on them, on me. Because I got something that I need you to change. Whew. Watch this. It says, and Jesus stood, I don't got time to get into that, and commanded him, that's a whole nother word, and asked him to come. The word command means everything that's binding you now has to break so that you can get there. Oh, 
And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What will thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I will receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive your sight. Thy faith has saved thee. He didn't say my touch. He didn't say my word. He said, your faith has saved you. Tell your neighbor, if you've got faith today, tell your neighbor just a little bit. Tell your neighbor it's enough to get the job done. Whew. And immediately he received the sight and followed him and glorified God. Watch this. And all the people, when they did what? And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. Now, now, did you hear what I just said? It said, when all the people did what? When all the people saw it. So what you're telling me was that sighted folks was walking blind. Because after he got his miracle, they saw what he saw before they could even see it. Look at your name and say, God's about to open somebody's eyes. In a place of victory, a blind man sat begging. Tell you, neighbor, that's the story of half our church folks. We sit in a place of victory still begging. Because we believe that everything we get, we got to get from somebody else. Because we don't think that we're good enough to get it from God ourselves. So we run around looking for somebody to lay hands on us, looking for somebody to prophesy to us. We buy everybody's book. Looking for somebody to give us something. Tell your neighbor the season of begging is over. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost, now, because I know this ain't popular. The season of begging is over. I'm not about to beg you to do what God has called me to do no more. If I got to walk the church, I ain't going to beg you for a ride. If I got to do the youth ministry by myself, I'm not going to beg you to show up. If I got to be here 24 hours, I'll mop the floor, wash the dishes, vacuum, open the church door, play the organ, preach, sing, give the altar call, close the church, because the season of begging is over. I'm not begging you for nothing. What God has for me is for me. And there's not a devil in hell that's going to stop me in this season of my life. But your neighbor say no more begging. Look at your neighbor say no more begging. So you, ain't got to, you ain't got to scandal nobody. You ain't got to swindle nobody. High five your neighbor say God's big enough to give you the money. God's big enough to write you the check. God's big enough to tell a bank to give you the loan. You ain't got to beg nobody for nothing. He's big enough to give you the car. Big enough to give you the house. Big enough to send your kids to school. You're not begging nobody. You're a king's kid. You don't take sides. You take over. Bible says in verse 36, I got to hurry. It says in blind Bartimaeus hearing... The multitude passed by. Did you hear that word? What did it say? He did what? He heard what? The multitude doing what? Tell your neighbor the season of people passing me by is over. Sitting in church all these years and everybody being promoted but you. Everybody getting a house but you. Everybody getting married but you. You better look at your neighbors and that season of people passing me by is over. You better tell your neighbor this miracle won't pass me by. This healing won't pass me by. This blessing won't pass me by. This power won't pass me by. It will not pass me by. I'm not sitting on this highway no more. It's not going to pass me by another Sunday. It's not going to pass me by another Monday. It's not going to pass me by another weekend. This is my time. This is my season. This is my breakthrough. This is my anointing. 